minutes. All right. And here we are live. Good to see you all. Welcome to Chi Talk. Uh, this, my name is Eli Cohen. I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. And this uh, talks is a series of talks that we uh, transcribe into the podcast called Awaken the Healer Within. And, the, and the, uh, the idea behind these talks is just to spread the word of health and healing and how can we take care of our own health and healing. This is something that is kind of lacking in Western medicine. Yeah, we're going to the doctor when we're sick, but how do we keep ourselves healthy? <laughs> so we see medicine as something that we are to, going to whenever we feel not good, but how do we feel good all the time? How do we, um, how do we help ourselves heal? And beyond that, the idea uh, of the talk today is actually how we work in, Chinese, in Qigong and, and Chinese medicine, medical Qigong, to actually not only keep yourself healthy, like a, as an idea of preventative medicine, but also how to uh, actually heal from a chronic health condition. So chronic health condition is, there's many, many conditions uh, that Western medicine doesn't have a sustainable answer to. Uh, it relies on um, medication that has a lot of side effects. And, uh, you know, this is the way I stumble upon on Qigong, uh, used to be an architect, and I just came into this interesting uh, a seminar, uh, and it was a medical Qigong seminar, and people walked up on stage, and, you know, they healed from cancer, and they healed from autoimmune disorders, and, and people, uh, amazing things, and I was just uh, kind of puzzled, and I just didn't understand how these movements can heal something like that, can heal cancer or all these things. And I, I just didn't understand. And that was, it was very uh, interesting. I was very curious in it. And so I continued, and this is what drew me into the practice. Also my, my own healing journey, when I was able to, to do kind of like the miracles on my own body. And then I, I just wanted to share today, and there's many facets to this, to, to, to how that happens. There's many facets. And it's almost like you, you have to go on that route, on that walk in order to understand how it works. But we can also talk about it. Yeah. And talking about it doesn't mean that you understand it on the experiential level, experiential level, right? We can uh, kind of read about things and know them intellectually, but we never really uh it's it's only when we walk on on that path that to kind of uh, understand how it works so i wanted to talk about in general today about the the concept of chinese medicine and how it relates to this miracle healing if you will and how simple the concept is really uh, so what i wanted to start with and what why why is it that working one-on-one -on, -one on chronic health conditions is, is a little different than doing a Qigong class once a week or a few times a week. That is good for preventative medicine. Uh, okay, so let's start with a little bit of meditation, if you will. Uh, thanks, good to see you all. Hey, Wendy, it's always good to see you <laughs> joining. So let's uh, close our eyes, if you will, and just feel your body. And focus on the, let's just start to focus on the point of contact of the body with the, with the earth, which is the feet and the sit bones. And starts to, uh, we call it give way to gravity or um, yielding to the earth chi. How do we yield to the earth chi? It's just kind of shifting your body weight and starting to relax muscular tension or changing your position of your spine in order to find a place where instead of you holding yourself up, you feel, you feel like you can align yourself with the earth energy. What is this earth energy? Simply with gravity. So just think about, hey, gravity is pulling me downward. And how can I align my own spine, my own body, my shoulders, my belly, 
my head to just, instead of me having to strain and, but having the earth holding me. So I align myself with a flow of energy. So it usually means a suspension of the spine, a relaxation of muscular tension. And, and it can also, you know, one way to really do it efficiently is to really put your attention in the feet and the base of the spine, the sit bones, and feel gravity, feel how your body putting pressure on the seat, putting pressure on the earth and relaxing into it, into that pressure, allowing that the density, the heaviness of the body to, to do that. Acknowledging the big space that's called earth beneath us. That's called earth beneath us. So this big space, big uh, energy um, field that's called earth. And let your mind kind of go into that vastness of energy, the depth of the earth. The vastness is in all kinds of side, behind you, in front of you, underneath you, yeah. And just think about all the things that the earth gives fruits to, the trees, the buildings, the mountains, and to you. And so we expand our kind of peripheral vision a little bit that kind of relax the mind. And with no effort on your part, acknowledge that, notice that the body is uh, breathing. Be curious about this quality of your breath. Seeing how the inhalation or the exhalation happens on its own naturally. Kind of looking at yourself from the outside. It's like I'm sitting here, I'm saying, hey, let's look how Ellie breathes if I'm not in the way of it. Just examining it like from the outside. Is it deep? Is it shallow? Is the inhale longer than the exhale? Just be curious about it, the process of breathing. Where in the body it's more prevalent or more attractive to you to find it. And let's decide together to deepen the breath a little bit on the inhale into the lower abdomen. And as you exhale, open the mouth and release the air out. And when you release the air out, see if you can release more of the usual exhalation. So really try to make the exhalation longer. and fuller exhalation, the inhalation would become fuller. See if you can make the exhalation a little longer than the inhalation. When we make the exhalation a little longer, and very uh, soft, it releases stress and tension.
longer exhalation. Slow and long inhalation and exhalation, but the exhalation is a little longer. And let's go into normal breathing, natural breathing in and out from the nose. Notice if something changed maybe in the process you're breathing now, in the way that you breathe now than we noticed before. So let's open the eyes. Ah, oh, beautiful. <laughs> That's nice and relaxing. Thank you, hi Mar Marnie. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about about this uh, this talk. So so you see, we we kind of change the environment of our body, and really, uh, this this is really nice because this is really the whole premise of this talk. Like, how do we heal from chronic health condition? How do I, when I work one on one with people, what would make it? So so that goes back to the idea of Chinese medicine versus Western medicine. Let's start from there. And then we'll open it to kind of Q&A and also uh, some sharing, if you like, for, from you guys. So um, what we have, what we, what we say in, in, in Western medicine is allopathic medicine, meaning that we are uh, trying to engage with, with the body in a, in, in, in allo is the other. So basically when you have bacteria, you take antibiotic, when you have cancer, you 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 bombard the body with with radioactive uh, or chemotherapy to kill. So the idea is to kill the bad guys, and this is really what uh, you know. If you have acid, you take acid. Um, you take something for anti-acid. So it's always anti. It's always the other. You really uh, try to kind of. Uh, uh, a kill the, the 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 bacteria or kill what's not good and now i just want to say i have a, a big respect to western medicine big respect and uh this is not to say uh that i'm judging it in any way it's it's amazing and it works amazing in some some ways it works amazing some other ways it doesn't have sustainable answer like some chronic health condition people suffer from and and this this is why we want to kind of introduce uh the ancient Chinese medicine that works amazing for, for these types of, but we have to understand how it works. We really have to understand how does it work in order to, to engage with it correctly. You know, so what, what we know in, in Western, so it's almost like there's kind of like a story that is very, um, is very, uh, it gives a good example uh, about, um, about, uh, you know, um, a field of rice and there's weed growing and so what there's weed growing in the right in the field of rice so what what in western medicine we're going to do we're going to put poison we're going to put pesticide to kill the weed but what happened when we put pesticides to kill the weed we changed the environment so the water the pesticides get into the water of the rice and also it affects the rice grain so the rice itself is different than the rice that used to be without this pesticide. So, and this is really what we do in Western medicine and Western uh, practices in general, right? Also in, in agriculture, we just kind of kill the bacteria. So, uh, so what in Chinese medicine we're gonna do is we, we going, going to uh, 
change the environment. We're going to change the environment in a way that create more bell. So we plant a lot of rice, much more rice, so the wheat doesn't have any place to grow. Uh, so this is this is kind of like one example, one example of how how uh, how Chinese medicine work. It works from a um, not so much of uh, in an allopathic way, but also but in a way to find balance. So we maybe gonna maybe we're gonna help the we're gonna do something to help the 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 rice grow, and we're gonna plant much more rice, and we're gonna weed out by hand some of the <laughs> some of the the weeds. Um, we are not gonna so so the idea is what we what we want to do is to change the the environment from the from the inside so it's almost like a, a, a gardener attending a garden as opposed to uh kind of uh, put something from the top down into the whole garden so it's more about finding harmony finding uh balance so whenever we have any chronic health condition whether it could be insomnia or cancer uh or whatever it is autoimmune disorder the body is out of balance <laughs> And how do we change the internal environments to bring it into a balance? It's almost like what we did now in the meditation is, is uh, there's two parts of it. But the first part is to see your life. To, like we looked at the breath. It's one of the most powerful practices is to think about yourself like a third person. It's like, look how Ellie is breathing right now. Or look how I respond to this life circumstance, look how I respond to the threat of coronavirus, I don't know, or look how I respond. So look at you from like the top of the mountain of how you deal with different things. When you have this separation, when you look at yourself like a doctor, things start to change. Yeah, it's almost when you go to the, almost like when you go to the hospital in the ER, you notice they tell you, okay, can you uh, rate the pain from one to 10. They always tell you that. Why do they tell you that? It's a psychological game. Because when you are not in your, in your brain with the pain, you actually look at the pain and you try to rate it. Then you say, oh, it's, is it 10? No, it's not 10. It's five. No, it's kind of six. And you put six. In the minute you did that, the pain got reduced. <laughs> So this is a psychological trick, you know, um, doctors know that. This is why we do it, they do it in the ER. So when you start to look at your life, so the first step of dealing with any chronic uh, health condition is to see uh, your life as a whole. And then the Qigong practice or the medical Qigong practice, it's really to change the environment, to like plants. So, so for the rice field, if, if you put... You know, if, if uh, what, what we're going to do is either plant more rice, I said, or, or put more uh, or change the soil or add a, a, a different water with more oxygen or something to, to help the good rice grow and not the weed. So we have to change the inside environment. Instead of just throwing pesticides, we just we change the internal environment. And how do we change it? we bring it into balance. A lot of stuff, the body, a lot of times the in chronic health condition, uh, whatever it may be, there's no balance in the body. There's no balance in your mind. And that consists of all your life uh, experience. So it could be your relationship with your partner. It could be <laughs> your work. It could be, you know, how, how you, where you live or all these things that make your life the way the way it is and how to change it, how to bring it into balance how to see <clears throat> so first of all uh you know you we we usually we prescribe it i prescribe a qigong practice a medical qigong practice that is being done every 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 day a daily thing and on top of it there's also a practice that you do all the time with yourself throughout the day because in order to change your, your energy, we have to change everything in your, in your, in your, uh, oops, 
let me see okay what happened here okay sorry i'm back here you have to change you have to work on it constantly you have to work with your energy constantly because you are who you are you are here because you created something you create the 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 life as it is right now the way your psyche works the way your mental processes work the way your emotion works the way your diet everything is is going to, is, is manifesting what it is now and if you have some ailment some issue that is ongoing then in order to shift it you have to shift something <laughs> you have to shift something in your life and this medical qigong practice that comes every that you do daily and not only that but you like okay so this breath that i gave like just we did this breath the exhale more than inhale and noticing how we breathe you you felt very good maybe you felt very relaxed after it and um so that's a way to bring the body into balance so a qigong practice can do it something like that can do it like my um my homework for you is to do this breath maybe uh just to try it out for three days to do this type of breath we just did uh four times during the day it's just in one minute so it can be as as simple as that so when we are changing when we are telling our brain when we bringing the the body and mind into balance a few times a day just in increments like that something after a few weeks something will start to shift it's very miraculous but it's actually based on a very simple idea of of harmony and balance between your your energy centers and the way you starting to think about oh um how like how do i breathe right now or how do i react to this stimuli or how do i react to this stimuli and you're starting to not only look at yourself on the outside but also do some practices throughout the day that are uh bringing your body and mind into balance you know some practices are one minute a day like a few times a, a, a day and one practice and and the daily practice for an for an hour or half an hour a day all of these th things add up and um believe it or not things change <laughs> things change and uh and people heal and it's and it's it is miraculous but it's pretty simple because uh i don't know if some if any of you felt the the breath in the beginning and the breath at the end and it's a little different when you start to teach your mind this on a regular basis you're starting to shift your energy you start to shift your entire environment your internal environment so there's more good rice can grow the good rice can grow more and it could be a breath practice it could be a gratitude practice it could be all kinds of different things and you have to understand what is your life triggers maybe what triggers you is the news you know and you're addicted to looking at the news and really stressed out or maybe a person in your life or maybe a situation of a, with a person in your life so you have to have this internal lens of look at where is the triggers where is the stressors and also adopt adopt uh, a practice that brings yourself into harmony over and over again in during the day so it's it's a it's a commitment and we talked about commitment to a practice and commitment to healing and commitment to health uh in in like um i think it was a few weeks ago we talked about it so um and eventually after after this so it's it's really small increments it's not like a big uh, and at small increments you're doing something a little by little by little every day but the consistency after a month after two months things change so it's not this bullet the pill everybody wants the pill and to heal right away and to feel that, you know we but this is a very gradual process of of change uh that the, the, this is what qigong and chinese medicine is based on is based on balance and and we find health through balance and through relaxation and so the qigong practice a daily qigong practice is important 
um, but also it's not just a practice and then your life is as it is. You're taking this, uh, you're taking uh, a certain practices. <laughs> this is what I do with uh, working with one on one. Give people some practice throughout the day. You always look at, you always uh, implement it into your life. So it's it's not separate. It's not that you do something and then you're you're back to your own self. It's it's a constant uh, it's constant work, but it's actually very simple. And uh, it it tends to change the environment and the rice can grow if that makes sense. So uh, so this is kind of like how more Chinese medicine works like a gardener instead of uh, an allopathic medicine that that just kind of uh, bombard. And uh, and again, <laughs> Western medicine is amazing at what it does, uh, but I know that not in all it doesn't support everything. Uh, and uh, and this is why we are here, and this is why Chinese medicine is here, and this is why energy healing is here. And there's so much people find uh, healing through this venue, and you healing with every qigong practice you do. <laughs> so um, I wanted to open it to a conversation. I don't know if I was um, I was very uh, clear or of, or there's more question about it. <laughs> But uh, if, if there is, please let's open the conversation or if you want to share something that you think you're gonna put more light into it, inspiration, please do it. Yes, Edward, go ahead. Are you raising your hand? Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is very powerful. So I wanna tell everyone, so in, Five diagnosed a year and two, and my mother would make breakfast every day. Remember, this is the okay, it's 1960-66. And she would, you know, grapefruit first, and I would pray over the grapefruit food would heal him. That you know would is as we, as you oops yeah he was having he's having trouble with his audio okay yeah 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 i think he's going to come back in okay uh edward you just came back we couldn't hear you very well right everybody heard him or is it just me no, that was, your okay. audio is, oh. is is iffy okay okay yeah it was choppy okay i thought did my... you get the part about threading the needle as you thread no. the needle no. Repeat, okay. Repeat. <laughs> so, so my father was diagnosed with cancer in '65. They gave him a month to live. He went a year and two weeks. And my mother would give us breath, and she put down the grapefruit first. And all of a sudden, I realized I said, "Well, it's the food." And I would like pray over the food that it would heal him. And then what I realized was, as you thread as you get cancer in your body, you unthread the needle. You pull the cancer out of the body yourself. You caused it. And I realized I can uncause it. Remember, this is 1966, you know, and everything you talk about, you know, mm. is such advancement as to who we were way back then and what we knew. And as you put the car in reverse, or drive, I can put the cancer in reverse. I can put the pain in reverse. And I, I've done that in all my, my growth over the years. And it's worked and it's mind over and my- Oh, we cannot hear you very well. Out of my body. Get Oh, I don't know. I think Nothing. we cannot. We cannot hear you. I I uh, I like the <laughs> I like the uh, the 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 needle and and undo it and and this is really what the process is about is really how to bring the body into back into balance and this is what we're talking about. I think what you're trying to share is like a, a personal story of it. Um, 
and uh, and sometimes we don't know how our life developed this disease that it developed. We are we are not aware. You know, I was not aware how my body developed a chronic health condition in my stomach. I just moved. Everything was going well for me. But when I look back after the healing, I know exactly what happened. Uh, but uh, but it takes it takes. Um, it, it, so what we were doing is basically bringing the body and mind into balance and 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 uh, incorporating this mind body practices uh, through throughout our life is very important for this. So um, anybody wants to share? Oh, hey, Peter. Yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I love the fact that you can you hear me? OK. Yep. OK. I love the fact that you use the word balance, I think, at least five or six times. Um, because what that really brings to mind with uh, TCM is the five element theory and really understanding um, where you are um, at every moment in seasonally, uh, in your own astrologically, if, if you uh, are into that, um, because balance is so critical. Some, sometimes we think that we're, a one, we're one way. Let's say, okay, I'm the metal element and I will always be the metal element. But I think the balance is important because we need to understand when our, for example, metal element is out of balance. There's too mm -hmm. much or too little. And I really appreciate you talking about um, balance, and it is no different than um, in Ayurveda when they talk about the doshas and mm -hmm. the gunas. Um, you might gravitate towards one certain constitution, but I think what's important is to understand where you are at any given time and, yeah. if, and if you're out of balance and what you need to do. Yeah. Like for, for example, I mean, I'm in Michigan um, in May. So one day it's 40 degrees and the next day it's 80 degrees. So that really kind of messes up your constitution. And it also has a huge impact on how you eat and how you exercise. Um, you know, on a 40 degree day, I'm not going to just eat cold salad, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I want the pierogi and I want the latka and I want the, I want the lefsa and I want all the comfort food. But when it's 85 the next day, I want the bright, bright, fresh salad. So thank you for talking about balance because I think that's what, I think that's a foundation of TCM yeah. in, my, in my opinion, in my learning. Yes, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for adding, uh, adding this. And it's, it's for us to see, hey, I feel anxious right now. <laughs> you know, what do I do? Like how Ellie feels. This is really helping me to kind of step out of me as me, but put like look at me from the outside and seeing, hey, how do I decide to respond to that? Because usually we respond to to emotional triggers or to like to the weather in, in a certain way. And it's, it's, sometimes we go into our patterns of how to respond to things. And we become mindful and look at ourselves and what's, what's out of balance right now, emotionally or um, weather-wise, and how do we get back into, how do we de decide to respond to this, to, to get ourselves back into balance? Thank you for, for this kind of focus. Uh, uh, but it's, it really takes this, uh, it's kind of looking at yourself, being aware, mindful, and and choosing choosing what to do, you know. And um, and again, and, and when I go through a process of working with somebody with a chronic health condition, we are we are very adamant about this process. It's very, yeah. You 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 really look at your life. You really look at your day. You um, and you, you incorporate this. Uh, these practices and this is uh thank you for for mentioning that and the five element is yeah of course uh that's a part of it uh beautiful thank you peter 
Uh, anybody else wants to say anything before we close? Marnie, uh, welcome to our Chi Talk. I think this is your first one, right? <laughs> it is my first Chi Talk and I've loved it. Thank you so much. Normally okay. I'm working right now, but I'm trying to work around my schedule so I can join in. Oh, awesome. So thank <laughs> okay. you. You're welcome. And, you know, and next week we're going to talk about the concept of Chi. And I know a lot of people talk about Chi, but we're going to talk about it in a different way, a very surprising way. So we're just going to, next week, we're going to, talk about uh, chi. What is chi? It's very simple and there's usually a very obvious answer to it, but I'm, I'm going to challenge it a little bit and kind of draw it from medical qigong. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. All right, so let's, uh, let's come back into our center. Let's close the eyes. If you, fit, if you will, let's put the hands on the lower abdomen to anchor all the goodness that we received from this talk, all the wisdom into our belly. Yeah, the belly is kind of like our second brain. Yeah, in Western medicine, we said that's the second brain. But in Chinese medicine, that's the first brain. <laughs> so let's digest. Yeah, so we digest food, but we also digest life experiences. We digest information. So let's, uh, we put our hands on the navel. And we mind the space between the navel and the spine. That's the point of uh, power and peace. That's your powerhouse right here. It's called the sea of chi, the sea of energy. And it relates to the kidney. Yeah, if you go from the navel, you take a line, a line, a line backwards towards the spine. You write in the space between the kidneys, between the two kidneys, the closest space when the kidneys almost touch. Let's breathe into the center. And as we can I come into the center? I'd like to challenge you if you if you are uh, open to take this challenge is to uh, repeat this breath that we did, starting with just acknowledging how you breathe at the moment and then <clears throat> going into cleansing breath with a long exhalation and then going again into noticing the breath. And that's just that, that's it. If you can do it, couple times or three times a day. If you'd like to take this challenge, that's great. Or if this is too much, you can just do the cleansing breath a few times a day. If you can do it for a few days or for a week and see how your week has changed a little bit. Mind is concentrated on the lower abdomen, on the breath there. Until your mind is so sharp focus. That you feel that peace and power the combination of peace and power inside of you. Omnipresent. Nice, and from here, let's open the hands, open the eyes. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Half an hour of a little bit of a chi. <laughs>
Thank you guys and see you next week or tomorrow. Good night, Qigong. Bye. <laughs> see you.